don't even work. There's a lot of keyboard and mouse functionality on consoles, just not specifically the Nintendo Switch. Maybe you're playing Fortnite with all your friends and they all have PCs, so they're playing with keyboard and mouse and you're stuck with a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5. Well, you can just plug a keyboard and mouse right into your PlayStation 5 and play just like them. Unfortunately, it's not so easy on the Nintendo Switch. I think the only game that really just lets you plug in and play with the keyboard and mouse is Quake, and it actually works surprisingly well. Other games have half-assed keyboard and mouse functionality, but there are ways to get keyboard and mouse support on all games through third-party peripherals and dongles. These sorts of dongles use your keyboard and mouse to emulate controller functionality. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one translation. There's some jank, but a setup like this might make certain games more accessible to you. It might also give you a super unfair advantage in games like Fortnite on the Switch. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Everybody knows that VPNs could be used to change your location so that you can access content that might otherwise be blocked in your country. But VPNs could also be used to encrypt your data so that nobody on your network can see what you're doing. That includes Matrix Guy over here. But Surfshark also has features like static IP so you can have a stable connection the whole time or camouflage mode so your ISP won't even know you're using a VPN. Did we get him? No, sir, it doesn't look like he's using a VPN at all. God damn it! It was plastic. It sounded like it was glass, but it was plastic. I know, it sounded exactly like glass. If you want to give Surfshark a try, you can check it out at the link in the description below and use code WOLFDEN for a whole 83% off plus three months for free. That's a whole lot of deal. Check it out to see how it fits in your life. Nobody else saw that! So when you plug a keyboard and mouse into your Switch to play Fortnite, nothing happens in Fortnite. If you plug a keyboard and mouse into, let's say, Doom 64, or any other Dooms on Switch, the retro ones, not 2016 or Eternal, you can remap the buttons and assign actions to keyboard keys. But a mouse is not supported. You can just put a Joy-Con in your right hand, but that's like the opposite of what we want here. Quake seems to be the only game that I know of with native keyboard and mouse support, and it works really, really well. Hypnospace Outlaw also has mouse and keyboard support. That's a point and click game though, so that just, it just makes sense, and it's not as exciting. That game just uses the keyboard for like keyboard prompts, and keyboards are natively supported on the Switch, and we know this. If you have a keyboard plugged in and a prompt comes up, you can just type with the keyboard. You don't need to use the thumbstick to navigate the on-screen keyboard anymore. Leave a, leave a keyboard plugged into your Switch just so you can do this whenever a prompt comes up. I also noticed that some games will still react to keyboard presses on a connected keyboard. It just doesn't seem like it's an intended functionality. The default keys are almost always garbage and you can almost never remap them. I'm assuming Jedi Outcast has this functionality because it's a PC port. They probably left the default keyboard mappings in and just forgot about it. Anyway, we know that keyboards are supported on the Switch and it's pretty much always been that way, but now we also know that mice are supported. It's just that developers hardly ever utilize this functionality on the Switch, but they do on other consoles. You can plug in a keyboard and mouse into a Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5 and use it as a makeshift gaming desktop if you wanted to. But you can totally force your games to work with a keyboard and mouse. 
In order to do this, you're gonna need some sort of third-party device that will take your keyboard and mouse movement and emulate a controller input. I suspect things are gonna get lost in that translation. There are many devices in all different price ranges, and I have two of them here. The Keymander 2 is the one I've used in the past to get keyboards to work on the Switch, and it also works on PlayStation and Xbox, but I don't think I've ever used it to try to get a mouse to work. I like this one a lot because it uses an app to remap the keys. Keyboard mapping can get very confusing, especially when you're using it to emulate an existing controller. You can do your best to map all of the keys so that they feel great, but then when a game says, press the Y key, you might get tripped up. I also like how the Keymander allows you to map three keys per action. So I have my keyboard set up like I would a fight pad. Then I have it so my left hand can perform all of the tasks it normally would when playing a first person shooter. There's not really a need to set up different profiles. The one profile can do basically everything. I did want to set up a new profile to try Kirby out. It works surprisingly well with the keyboard and mouse, but I did have to basically remap everything. It's not like a shooter. Mouse click had to be the A button. This app doesn't let you copy profiles, so you have to assign every single profile one key at a time, which really sucks. I also had some power delivery issues with two of the keyboards I tried with the Keymander. The only keyboard that I got to really work was my Keychron. No, don't get out of here. I guess this one's pretty power efficient. The other two keyboards that I tried were probably sucking all of the life out of this Keymander. It also requires two USB inputs, one for power and one for data, which I don't love. This Keymander device is also $100, so that's kind of a lot, but it does have a lot of great functionality. GameSir has a device that's about half the price. I didn't end up getting that one. I think this one came out first and I just nabbed this one. It also looks like it has a similar app, so remapping keys should be pretty easy on that too. Now, there's also a way cheaper device by Dobe that is just $24, but this doesn't have an app, so remapping keys is a huge pain in the ass. You have to basically do like keyboard shortcuts and hope that they just work. At least the default mapping is like kind of good. Ooh, ooh, that's really bad. <laughs> the sensitivity is so bad. Ooh, 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 no. Ah, I can't, I, I can't do like precise movements at all. If you really wanna do this, it's probably worth spending the extra money on a better dongle. The only benefit to this one is that it's cheap and it only has one input. I'm sure most people who are watching this are interested in how this works with Fortnite and other shooters. Fortnite should have keyboard and mouse support, but it doesn't, it's very disappointing. So you'll need something like this. You'll be happy to know that the Keymander works a little better with mouse movement. It took me a while to map the keys the way I wanted, but once I got it figured out, I was able to get it to feel pretty much exactly like it does on PC, at least as far as the button mapping goes. Remember, it's emulating controller inputs, so you have to do things like map L and R to the scroll wheel in order to have the scroll wheel swap through your weapons like it would on PC. The first game I tried this on, the one that I was remapping the controls during, this happened. Come on, how are you alive? And I can't help but feel bad about it because this is definitely cheating. Not that keyboard and mouse is that much better than controller. It's just that the Switch still thinks you're using a controller because of the way this device is emulating your keyboard and mouse to act like a controller. So you still have aim assist. So my sniper rifle wasn't really giving me much aim assist, but like the AR was snapping to people's chests. That's not right, it shouldn't work like that. I, my aim is not that good when I'm not using this. Do, oh, you know what sucks? You know what sucks? I probably have aim assist <laughs> because it thinks I'm a controller. <laughs> oh no. I think I think, I think think am cheating. 
it might also help that I like never play Fortnite, so this was definitely like a bot lobby, but I mean, this isn't my first game on the Switch. I've played uh, at least a couple times. So you have kind of an advantage in that regard, but in a lot of other ways, this setup is way worse. It's hard to put into words just how janky it is, because it's just a little janky in a lot of ways. The biggest problem is probably the input lag on the mouse. It's very slight, but it's most noticeable in Doom, because I think Doom already has a lot of input lag, and it's amplified by the mouse movement. Other than that, moving your character feels a little weird, like almost sluggish. And not everything's gonna work right. Running in Fortnite is a double tap instead of just a dedicated button. The Keymander does have three USB ports though, one for keyboard, one for mouse, and one for controller. I believe that controller input is so that you can use like a pro controller on your Xbox if you want. But it also means if you really wanted to, you can use a controller in your left hand and a mouse in your right for the ultimate gamer setup, in theory. In theory, this is the optimal setup because you have a thumbstick for movement and a mouse on your right for high accuracy aiming. In practice, you're probably gonna want a mouse with a bunch of buttons on it because you're missing out on all of the face buttons you'd usually have on the right side of a controller. And that's also gonna take a lot of getting used to and probably not at all worth it for the marginal increase in movement accuracy. This is a complicated solution to a simple problem that still doesn't even really solve anything. Sure, if, if you wanna play keyboard and mouse games with your friends who are all playing keyboard and mouse, the best solution is a PC, but that's kind of a huge investment. So I understand the market for something like this. The best solution would just be for developers to let us plug a keyboard and mouse into the Switch. They have that functionality on other consoles. It's already there on the Switch. Why not just let us do it on the Switch? If you bought a Switch because you like its portability and you want to be able to plug a keyboard and mouse in sometimes, then may I introduce you to the Steam Deck? I still think this Keymander device is really cool for getting a keyboard to be mapped to work with like fighting games and stuff. It's a cool little device to play around with in that way. But to play like competitive shooters with a keyboard and mouse, I, I feel like this sort of setup kind of has a long way to go. It's not exactly where I would like it to be. But if you wanna be a real jerk and you wanna get some easy aim assist wins, then I mean, go ahead, spend a hundred bucks. I don't care. What do you guys think about keyboard mouse support on the Nintendo Switch? Does this give you any ideas? Is, is this something you wanna try on a specific game? Is there any game that I left out that I should try? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and any and all of this other social media garbage. A lot of the clips you saw today were from my Twitch stream over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. I'll stream there and sometimes play around with stuff that I'll eventually make a video out of. It's also a great way to support the channel. If you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account. It's a free subscription over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. But of course, the most important things you can do to help support the channel is just subscribe right here. We have new videos at least once a week. And you could also share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe has some struggles and wish they could have a PC set up, but all they have is a console. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week.